Hello, I'm Craig Rose. Under a NOAA-funded project, my fisheries research company, Fishnext Research, has been developing a system allowing triggered release of fish from trawls when too many unwanted fish, or bycatch, are seen in real-time videos, something we're calling Active Selection, or ActCell for short. First, some background. Pelagic trawls are towed nets that can capture fish from large volumes of water. The very large meshes in the front ends herd fish into smaller areas toward the back, enclosed by small enough meshes to retain the targeted fish. Pelagic trawls are used by some of the highest volume fisheries in the United States, including those for Alaska Pollock and Pacific Hake. Bycatch limits, particularly salmon bycatch, are a very important aspect of management and are a critical restriction for both fisheries. While salmon bycatch rates are usually below one salmon per ton of pollock, Significant bycatch numbers result from the very high catch volumes. Our project provides a new method for reducing that bycatch. Technology provides trawlers information about what they are catching. Trawl sonars, mounted on the trawl's leading edge, show how many fish are entering their nets. More recently, practical systems have been developed that provide real-time video of fish passing through the back of their net. Our Axel system allows trawlers to selectively release fish in that area. Here's how the actual cell system works. During normal fishing, fish stream back toward the caught end. When the Axel system is triggered for release, fish are temporarily routed out of the net. The Axel system includes several key components. We needed video on the net and the ability to send trigger signals. For those, we used the Simred FX80 system. We needed a net panel in the trawl that covers a release opening during normal fishing, but herds fish into that opening when moved. We needed a device to drive that net panel between those catch and release positions, and we needed an actuator to control the direction of panel movement when triggered from the bridge of the vessel. Our project's work started in the fall of 2019. Our computer modeling of the net went quickly, and we got started on the actuator development. However, COVID restrictions prevented us from traveling to a specialized facility in Canada for scale model trials. We finally developed ways to do that work remotely starting in November of 2020. After working through a wide range of designs with sequential adjustments and improvements, we finished the design in last June and prepared for field testing. Our sea trials were done during three trips on board the trawler Marathon while they fished for Pacific Hake in July and August. In normal capture mode, our net selection panel is pressed against the outer walls of the trawl and covers the release opening. To the fish, this works just like an unmodified net. However, when that selection panel's front edge is moved down to the bottom of the net, it creates a ramp that directs fish out of the release opening. Our device to move the selection panel is a long, narrow water kite across the center of the leading edge of the selection panel. The kite is controlled by two lines that adjust the kite's angle to the water flow. Tightening the top control line presses the front edge of the kite down, angling the kite to push downward. Similarly, tightening the lower line makes the kite drive upward. Here's how that worked at the scale models in the flume tank. Tightening the top line 
push the panel down, exposing the release opening. Whereas tightening the bottom line, pushed the panel back up, returning to its normal fishing shape. Our actuator device uses a commercial underwater rotator, turning a two-sided reel. Reel rotations tighten one control line while slacking the other. The housing contains control electronics and a battery pack. These translate on-off signals from the vessel, triggering and powering opposite rotations of the reel. Here are all of the on-net components as they were deployed aboard the Marathon. A communication hub sits on top of the net with the video camera in the net viewing the selection panel area. Cables connect the hub to the camera to transmit video and to the actuator providing the on-off signals that trigger rotations of its reel. Those rotations adjust the control lines resetting kite angles and causing the panel to move up or down. Here is the selection panel in action. Remember that the release opening is in the top panel, so any fish passing over the panel are released, while all those passing under the panel go back to the caught end. Also, the panel you see here was slightly undersized, so did not seal perfectly with the top or bottom panels. Starting with the panel in the normal fishing position, we sent the release signal triggering the top line to tighten and driving the panel downward. Next, we turned off that signal and turned on the signal for normal fishing. The bottom line was tightened and the panel resumed its normal position. As I mentioned, the selection panel was undersized for that earlier video, so here's what it looks like when sized correctly. In both the up and down positions, the edge of the selection panel is mostly sealed against the outer net. Our work produced all of the needed components that I listed earlier and integrated them into a working system. This provides trawlers the ability to selectively catch or release fish that they observe while they are fishing. Our project has opened the door to a whole new way for trawlers to control bycatch. However, while developing and demonstrating this capability are important, they are only partial steps toward actually achieving bycatch reductions. The next step will be for trawl captains to discover how to effectively apply this capability to reduce bycatch in their operations. Of course, we can expect new needs and ideas for systems improvements to emerge from re these real world applications. Throughout this project, we have presented and discussed the project at meetings with fishery captains, keeping them aware of the work, updating them on our progress, and gathering their feedback. Continued work will deploy Excel systems on more vessels while further developing and improving the system design. I am pleased to acknowledge the contributions of these four key collaborators. This project would not have been possible without them. Our project was funded by NOAA's Bycatch Reduction Engineering Program. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to address any questions that you may have.